Hey, y'all, come on into the pantry with me. I'm coming in to get a great piece of equipment, a crock pot. And today I'm gonna share a slow cooking recipe for my mama's Swiss steak, which is so good. And believe it or not, a creamy macaroni and cheese in the crock pot. And how about a Dutch oven peach cobbler? And I'm gonna show you a neat little trick with my Aunt Peggy's potpourri. So come on in and let's get to slow cooking. <laughs> You know, there is nothing like a crock pot, but there are dishes that we can slow cook in a Dutch oven on top of our stove. And I want to share with y'all one of my mama's recipes that she just cooked perfectly every time, and that's a Swiss steak. I'm going to start with about a pound and a half of cubed round steak. So I'm going to cut this into serving size pieces. You don't have to be particular about cutting it with the grain or, or against the grain. You know, you just, like I said, want to cut it into serving size pieces. Now, I'm just going to season this with a little pepper and a little salt. You want to make sure you season it up good. All right, now I'm just going to toss this into my flour give it a little crust, you know? And plus the excess flour from our steak is gonna kinda thicken our gravy. All right, now I've got my, my cast iron Dutch oven heating up, and I'm gonna be putting a little oil in that, but before I do that, I want to get me some bell pepper and onion sliced up to go in this pot. I'm just gonna cut it in strips. I'm not gonna dice it up because I want you to be able to see that bell pepper in that dish when you go to dip it up and put it on top of your rice. Mm, I want you to see it. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my garlic cloves. I'm just gonna smash those just like that and that'll help get that flavor released out of those. All right. And then our onion. And I like a lot of onion in mine. This is a smaller onion that I had this morning. I'd probably use two of these. All right, we're just gonna paddle it. Once again, we don't want it cut so fine that we can't see it. All right, so that's ready to go in our pot. And I'm gonna come on over here and I'm gonna put about a third of a cup of oil. We don't need a lot. While we're waiting on our pot to heat up, I'm gonna run over here to the sink real quick, like don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna wash the goop off my hands. Okay. And here we go. Let's drop our meat in quickly. Mm, 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 mm. All right, so I'm gonna just brown this on all sides and it won't take long. I don't have to cook it until it's totally done because we're gonna slow cook it after I've browned it off. So all we wanna do is get a nice little brown edge to it. We make this dish all the time at the Lady and Sons. Oh, and people just love it. I mean, they love it. All right, our steak is browning, and I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna add, what the heck? I think, I, <laughs> I think I'll put a tablespoon of butter in it just cause I saw the butter sitting back here. <laughs> Can't resist it. All right. Now I'm gonna just let it just sit there for a minute. 
while I sear off the onions and the bell peppers. And I told you that doesn't have to be all the way done. All right. All right. In with our fresh garlic. So now I just want to run those peppers and onions around in that wonderful drippings that have accumulated down there from the flour on the steak. Mmm. All righty. All right, now I'm just going to pour my steak back on top of my onions and my peppers. And look at all that wonderful stock coming out of that steak. All right. Now I'm going to take a can of just plain diced tomato. All right. And I'm going to use probably a can of water. Oh. Doesn't that look good? I'm gonna put the lid on this, and I'm gonna put it on low, and I'm gonna let it simmer probably for about an hour and a half or two hours, but I'm gonna come check on it, and I'm gonna test that meat using a fork, and when it's good and tender, our Swiss steak is ready. Well, now, I'm real excited about this next dish that uh, I'm gonna make for you. It's a macaroni and cheese, but we're gonna make it in the crock pot. Now, I've got a pot over here going. I've got some hot, salty water. I've got two cups of macaroni, elbow macaroni, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it down into my pot because I wanna get that cooked because when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to put together macaroni and cheese for the crock pot. Then I'm gonna be making a sinful peach and blueberry cobbler and my Aunt Peggy's potpourri. And it smells heavenly. Hey y'all, welcome back. Today's show is all about slow cooking. And the next recipe I'm making is a creamy macaroni and cheese. What's really gonna put this dish over the top, y'all, is I'm cooking it with a cheddar cheese soup in a crock pot. And I love it because you can just put it in your cooker and walk away and forget about it for three hours. Now I'm gonna melt a half a stick of butter and I'm gonna mix into that butter two and a half cups of a sharp shredded cheddar cheese. And we're just gonna stir that until it's all melted. All right, so I got our cheese and our butter melting. You know, I don't know how many tons <laughs> of macaroni and cheese we serve a year at the Lady and Sons. I can tell you right now, it's a lot. And I've shared that recipe with y'all before. But this recipe's got a little twist. Well, one, it's done in the crock pot and two, it's got a soup in it, a cheddar cheese soup. Oh, look at that. Can y'all see down in there? Look. <laughs> Is that heaven, kids, or what? <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Now, to this, I'm going to add one can of cheddar cheese soup. Yum, look at that. All right, I'm gonna mix that together. This really does not require a whole bunch of skill. Now I'm gonna add a half a cup of sour cream. Not many ways you can mess this up, kids. All right. I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of ground mustard, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. All right, now we're gonna add one cup of milk. 
Mmm. All right, now I'm gonna beat up three eggs because here in the South, we just like eggs in our macaroni and cheese. And I know other parts of the country doesn't do this. But if you don't like it, you can leave them out. All right, in the crock pot they go. Now I'm gonna stir in our macaroni that I've had over here draining. And this is about two cups of cooked elbow macaroni. Okay, we're just gonna stir that up, put it on low, and we're gonna let this cook for three hours. And about 30 minutes before it's ready, we're gonna come back and we're gonna top it with a little bit more cheddar cheese, put the top back on it, and let it finish cooking for that last 30 minutes. Ready? <laughs> Look. Gosh, I wish y'all were here. Now you know there is no box of macaroni and cheese that's gonna taste that good anywhere. Look at the steam coming off of that. <laughs> Mm. Oh. Here, open wide. Mm. Oh my goodness, this is so good. But you know what? I'm fixing to go one better. Cause you know what I'm fixing when we get back? a Dutch oven peach cobbler. And then I'm gonna show you how to make my Aunt Peggy's potpourri. So stick around, y'all. Ooh, this looks so good. In case y'all weren't here at the top of the show, it's all about slow cooking today in a crock pot and in a Dutch oven. And I have just stirred up my mother's Swiss steak, and it's cooking along. It looks fabulous. I can't wait to eat it. I always love doing dishes that my mother did. It, she's always near to me, but when I'm making her dishes, it's like she's right there inside my heart. All right, well, let's move on, because I want to show y'all how to make the best peach cobbler in a Dutch oven you ever put in your mouth, and it's easy and simple. Now, I'm going to spray my pan because sometimes crust can get kind of sticky on cobblers and I want to be able to scoop every bit of that out of my Dutch oven. Now, because it's not peach season, I'm going to be using a canned peach. Now, I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to drain them because I don't need quite so much liquid. So I'm gonna throw those, whoops, <laughs> a runaway peach. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take the other can and I'm gonna add it juice and all. All right, now come on over here in this bowl. I'm gonna add third of a cup of sugar and a half a cup of a biscuit mix. And I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon just a little bit, because I'm gonna be adding cinnamon, more cinnamon at the end. All right, now I'm gonna take a pint of blueberries, and you don't have to do this. If you don't like blueberries, you don't have to add them. You can just go with a straight peach. But I love what the blueberries do to it. Now I'm gonna take these dry ingredients, and I'm just gonna pour that in with our fruit, and I'm just gonna stir that up. Now that's gonna make our juice from our fruit nice and thick. It's not gonna be thin and watery. Now for our topping, I'm gonna use two and a quarter cups of biscuit mix. Just gonna kinda stir that around. I'm gonna use a half a stick of melted butter. A fourth of a cup of granulated sugar. 
All right, now I'm gonna add a half a cup of milk. I'm just gonna stir that up. And now you don't worry about the lumps in your mix because that's just part of a biscuit mix. All right. Now we're gonna drop dollops on top of our fruit. And this is gonna make like a wonderful fat dumpling, you know, that's gonna sit on top of that fruit. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, now I've dropped all those dumplings on top of our fruit. Doesn't that look delicious? Now, I mixed up our sugar and our cinnamon a while ago and put it in my shaker so that I could shake some of that mixture on top. It's gonna be delicious. All right, now I'm gonna put the lid on our cobbler and I'm gonna bake this inside in my oven at 350 covered for 45 minutes. So I'm gonna put it in the oven and I couldn't stand waiting that long, y'all. So I have another one. Oops, <laughs> wrong oven. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this in the oven and I couldn't wait 45 minutes. So I've got y'all one ready here in this other oven that I want you to see. And you're not gonna believe how good this dish turns out. Look at that. It's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, the cinnamon and the blueberries. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. Now the only thing that could make this cobbler better is either some cream poured over it, just a straight heavy cream or ice cream. Oh, can you imagine sitting around an open fire with your buddies, telling more stories? and eating peach and blueberry cobbler. You know, I, I'm gonna garnish it just because it's so beautiful on it. Look at the steam coming off of that. <laughs> you know, there's some dishes that just make me laugh out loud <laughs> because they're so good, it's just insane. <laughs> Mmm. This is one of those dishes that require some one-on-one -on -one personal time. So I'm gonna take it. And when we come back, I'm gonna give y'all a tip for making my Aunt Peggy's potpourri. Peggy, every holiday season, you can walk into her house and it smells heavenly because she's got on her stove, cooking away, simmering away, is a potpourri. Now, this is the way my Aunt Peggy does it. I'm gonna take my apples, I'm gonna take my lemons, I'm gonna take my oranges, mmm. This is probably my favorite part of a potpourri. I'm gonna put lots of oranges. And I'm gonna cover my fruit with water. I'm gonna add cinnamon sticks, bay leaves, and whole cloves, just like my Aunt Peggy. Plug it in and your house is smelling like the best of holidays. Y'all enjoy these ideas for your crock pot, and I hope to see you again real, real soon. And as always, 
I send y'all best dishes and love from my kitchen to yours. <laughs>